Okay, hello. Uh, so my name is Tomasz Noworyta and I would like to talk today about MongoDB and how much changes it went out from one from about a uh, year and a half. Okay, so I will be talking uh, mainly about first about some MongoDB's basics, so some introduction, what is MongoDB, what are the parts of it and why this is a good database. Also, then we will go after that to the some recent changes and finally I will just talk about some new changes that are upcoming in the probably m about a month ago release version 4.4 release candidate. Alright, so let's first start with what is MongoDB and my case for the non-relational databases. So MongoDB is a database that is document oriented, meaning that all the records which are here called documents are stored as JSON objects. So there is not really a schema, everything is stored as a JSON and under the hood it uses not only the pure JSON but actually a special implementation of JSON called Bison. The Bison which is the bi binary serialized object notation and it, is, it helps with some additional types and it extends the JSON and it provides also better serialization and deserialization. Uh, now let's get first uh, to some basic uh, term, terms between what is uh, what between relational and the MongoDB. So the table is called collection, row is an equivalent of the document, the column is a field, there are also some joints but they are not one-to-one -one joints but there is something called lookup and there's also an uh, option for using embedded docs so I will mention that later in the presentation and also there is a very harsh equivalent of group by which is aggregation pipeline and also I will be talking about that at length later so I will be from now using those MongoDB terms to referring to those different parts so first let's take a look at why we will want to use MongoDB and what are the clear advantages of it. First of all, it's schemaless. So we can put as many columns as we want, as many fields in one document and we are not limited. It's good for big data optimization, especially for the implementations of problems like Internet of Things, also some real-time statistics and real-time analyzing of them. It's also very good ally for web frameworks like React or Ember because it provides very quick uh, serialization of objects because it also uses JSON under the hood. It's uh, very easy to make it horizontally and geographically scaled. It's naturally distributed and also right now it provides some built-in functions for validation of the data. Uh, also now uh, let's take a look why would we want to use for example MongoDB and not the traditional relational databases and unfortunately here as in all the technologies there is no clear answer so we cannot say like use, use it for here so the answer would unfortunately be it depends. So we would need to, but here are some points what we want to take into consideration if we're planning some solution and we want to uh, pick some storage. So first of all is the referential integrity. So for example Postgres offer us stuff like constraints that we can uh, tightly join the data and for example if there are some, if there are missing connections then we will get error. In case of Mongo we can put any data we want, there is no inherent validation unless we put some validation on it. Also, uh, this is actually a problem, not right now, but it was before that Mongo didn't support a full transactional ACID uh, compatibility. So also if we needed a very strong transactional support, we would pick then tra tra uh, tra traditional relational databases. 
Also joints support. The joints in Mongo are quite different for example than in Postgres. So also if we want to analyze a lot of statistics the Mongo will be a good fit. But if we want to load lots of data for example in our object data mappers then it might not be such a good thing. Also how we are thinking about the data design. So in case sometimes if we want to use the the data in a form that we, we think in a traditional relational way in Mongo it might be very slow but if we model it a different way for example use embedded documents it might be quicker so there are definitely some design choice that we need to think about when we pick Mongo and there are some good solutions for it and there are some some bad solutions for it uh, the two main uh, object data mapper for Mongo, the most popular one at least, is Mongoose for JavaScript, which has a big community, and also Mongoid for Ruby on Rails, which is a little bit less developed, but nonetheless it's up to date. And after that, uh, that we know now the basics, let's take a look at the year and a half of the recent changes and what transformation Mongo came. So let's start starting with the version 3.4. We have finally support for decimal 128 because up till now we only had the type called double which only have approximation of the decimal numbers and now we have the exact decimal numbers so we can easily use it for tax calculations and some financial calculations. Before I go to the next part, I wanted to quickly say a few words about the aggregation pipeline. So how we can filter the data. So this is the equivalent of our joins. So in this case, we can, this is actually very much useful when we want to analyze, for example, some statistics, or in this case, in the example, we have some orders that are grouped, as you can see, in two stages. So in the second stage, we are joining them by some status and in the third stage, we are grouping them by their identificator. So in, in case of this aggregation pipeline, we can, we can map the collection and filter the results in different stages and then group them however we want and preprocess them. And this is really powerful. And in version 3.4, we also get some modifications for this aggregation pi pipeline. We've got some in, reduce, reverse, and zip. So in operator allows us to check if in array there is some element. Reduce uh, allows us to transform the array to some other uh, format. Reverse just reverses the array, and zip combines two array. So this is practically known from many different uh, operating, uh, excuse me, programming languages and now they are also available in our aggregation pipeline. So this is really powerful. Also there are some string operators as well like very much known split which just splits uh, into an array, some string, also some UTF-8 operator operations uh, are available. Also in the 3.4 version uh, we've got actually views. So something that we very much know from the relational databases, we can put from one collection, we can put them into a view, we can also apply some aggregation pipeline to it and this will give us some pre-processed read-only data and we can execute all the comments, read-only comments that we can do on collections. So we can do find, aggregate, distinct, so this is very useful to pack some pre-processed data there. Now let's take a look at the version 3.5 and here we have some something called the lookup. So the lookup we already seen, so this is the equivalent of the group by. And let's see what it is. So this is actually the left outer join. So we can join two collections and drive some uh, modifications and get some data from it. So we can map one, co we can uh, join one collection with some other collection. We provide 
the field from the local collection and the field from the foreign collection on which they will be joined and then to our local collection to each to each document there will be array of matching documents so also this is a very good tool so this is the example in in kind of pseudo sql how this what it would be the lookup so we are doing uh, from collection where output array in collection to join. So this is doing the subquery and we're just seeking from one, from one in this case actually will be table, in one table and to, into the second table. Uh, in version 3.5 also we have the support for JSON schema, which I already mentioned that we can put some validation of data. So when we create a new collection, so the new table, we can uh, pre-program all the rules for validation of, of each of the fields. And this also can be done in this 3.5 version. There are yet another, another operators for our aggregation uh, pipeline. And there is array to objects, uh, object to array, merging objects and there is now much easier way to do aggregation by the aggregate operator. Also there is a very useful thing about modifying when in our documents we can have for example one of the fields can have a type array and if we want to modify each element of the array there is now this dollar square brackets where we can say for example increment all the array elements by five and this will be just one statement and it will update the whole array. Now that we went through all those changes, now let's take a look into the future, what's going on in the release candidate 4.0 version which was released a month ago, so this is not production ready yet, but we finally have the multi-transactional -transa support, so ACID support, and we've got it now in this version. So up till now, the transactions were only on the level of singular documents. So if the singular document failed, then, then the whole transaction didn't allow to save it. But if we saved a bunch of documents, there was no way to correlate them into one transaction. So what we could do is, for example, we could embed one document in, in another and then we could take advantage of this one document tra transaction. But now we will have a full transactional support on multi documents and it will wait five milliseconds to obtain logs on all the documents, otherwise it will fail. There is also some typecasting added to aggregation pipelines, so we can uh, cast to bool, to decimal, to date, and uh, also at the end uh, there is some smaller change that the OpenSSL was dropped and now it's using uh, TLS support on Mac and Windows. Um, so in summary, I was talking about mostly what is MongoDB? Why, why you would want to consider using it? We took a look at some uh, changes in one, in one year and a half, and then we took a look at what's going on in the latest version. So I hope you were at least uh, now curious to check out the MongoDB and try it out for yourself. Thank you. And do you have any questions? Um, I think there is, I think there is a, a good um, tutorial on actually the official MongoDB uh, guides. I think there is there is some, I, at least from what I remember right now, uh, that there is some good guide for that. 
So it, it's very it's very important to make a good data decision designs because if you think about it in a relational way, it it actually might kill the performance. So it's definitely good to think about that. Okay, and if any qu more questions, yes. Um, if you, I mean, there is no way to actually rename a field because you would add a new field, so the old field would still be in place. So, but yes, you need to think all the time about the consistency of the data. So, for example, if you if you add some new fields, then in some old documents it it might be null. But in many times we are not renaming the fields; we're just adding new fields. So that's how how we are dealing with that. Yes? Um, I mean, yes and no, because we, we are using it, uh, actually how I'm right now using it on the project is that this is also, um, comes pre-processed with some relations. So we've got some additional, but yes, theoretically you could use one-to-one -one mapping so that there would be no, this middleman of converting it. Yes. Yes, but in practice you need some, for example, relations or some, because you, you want to make just one query, not like five queries. So, yes. So, I think in practice most of the time you wouldn't have something like that. Okay. Thank you.